recording in three, two, one. Good morning, WIDU listeners. Today we have Dr. Edward Dickerson, Fayetteville's favorite facial plastic surgeon, on the show and in the studio. Hey, thanks for having me, Jacqueline, and hello out there, WIDU listeners. Uh, this summer, Dr. Edward Dickerson partners with WIDU for a six-part series um, covering everything from laser hair removal to full facial plastic surgery and body plastic surgery. Every second and fourth Thursday at 10.30, tune in and hear all the latest in all of his aesthetic services and learn about the latest in technology advancements having to do with plastic surgery. Uh, today's show, we're going to talk about laser hair removal. Uh, that's something that a lot of ladies are looking for this summer. Everybody wants their smooth legs for their bikinis. Uh, Dr. D, can you tell us a little bit about laser hair removal, what exactly it is and uh, how any, everyone can benefit from it? Uh, thanks, Jacqueline. Uh, I am so thrilled to uh, do this category first because of the uh, seasonality of it. And you know, we usually talk about unwanted facial hair, but also that unwanted body hair. But let's first talk about what the laser does and what it is. You know, the fancy term that we use is something called selective photothermolysis. And what that means, folks, is essentially it is a truly pinpoint effect. So we're going to have a specific wavelength for a specific target. And in this case, the target is uh, the hair follicles, but even more importantly, the pigment. And all lasers, and uh, you know, my, my guest with me, uh, Cheryl Jones from uh, Poly Clinic, uh, can, you know, can, can probably relate to this. You know, Cheryl, are all those lasers equal? All those lasers are not equal. You need to know the skin type before you even apply a laser to a patient's skin. And that's so, so important because we're dealing with, you know, a canvas, whether it's got a little bit of a flavor, uh, it's a Fitzpatrick on the lighter scales, or whether it's the darkest of the dark. Would you not agree? I agree, totally. And, you know, once again, not only are we talking about a target, but we need to deliver the amount of energy. You know, there are some devices out there, whether you can buy them on the Internet or home, they may be called lasers and they may be light, but they don't even have enough energy to do any significant changes on the hair follicle. And more importantly, that delivery has to be quickly. What, what are your thoughts on that one? The delivery has to be quick. You have to have enough energy to penetrate deep enough to actually hit the hair follicle and do the procedure that would make the hair follicle die. That's what a laser does. It heats the follicle up, the hair in the follicle, and that's what kills the follicle. And so there are a lot of companies out there, um, uh, Cheryl, that we have dealt with and we've seen you know, but I can tell you, at least in my practice, I, I got to tell you that the, the Luminous uh, Duet has, has revolutionized the way that we do laser hair removal. And they essentially get all of those things. They have the right wavelength. They have the right energy. It's the speed. And most importantly, it is a comfortable process. The patient is in and out. And I know, Jacqueline, we're going to be talking a little bit more on that later on in the show, aren't yes, we? Yes, later on. Now, I want to emphasize what you guys were just saying. You know, there is a lot of at-home lasers on the market. You see them on QVC, on HSN, at Ulta. Um, you know, a lot of girls will try to do this at home. So you're saying that that's probably a bad idea. A better option would be go somewhere such as Fable Plastic Surgery and get it done by a professional who knows how to see what skin type you have, what the monitor says for the laser to use to make sure it's powerful enough to actually reduce your hair. Well, the, the purpose of having the laser pr procedure done in the first place is to get a permanent reduction. That means you won't have to keep doing this for the rest of your life. Once you have the appropriate number of procedures done, then you don't have the hair growth. Therefore, doing the type of things that you're talking about is not going to give you a permanent reduction. You may have a removal of the hair for a short period of time. It's just going to grow back. So you're wasting your time. Why put all that time and effort into doing those temporary things when you can just get a series done and just be done with it? Uh, that is so fantastic, Cheryl. And, and, I, and I agree with you. You know, And more importantly, I have seen numerous and numerous clients who've tried different options. And there are options out there, and I think that, you know, we can talk about those things. But, you know, when you actually will sit down with a pencil and paper, and over the time that you spent, the years that you spent, along with the other trying to uh, get by, if you will, there's a significant amount of energy investment that is probably gone, you know, we, we just don't see the outcomes that the patient would like to see versus sitting down 
and once again putting a priority on this particular entity and get the results that they want. Oh, I always tell Dr. D. I always tell my patients, take about think about how how much money you're going to spend for this procedure, divide it by the number of years that you do not have to shave anymore, and then see how much it's going to cost you annually. Minimal, just dollars. It's well worth to have the procedure done and just be done with it. Uh, that is awesome. Um, now, Cheryl, a little bit um, about your background. You are the dermatology physician's assistant at the Poly Clinic here in Fayetteville. Um, what can you describe the experience you have in cosmetic aesthetics? Well, I've started. I've been here in North Carolina, which I absolutely love it here. I moved here from Michigan. I was a dermatology PA for. I've been that for 15 years now. So I'm so happy to be here in Fayetteville. Everybody's been wonderful and welcoming. Um, meeting Dr. D has been just great for us, and the support that I've had from everyone here, I want to say that first. Um, we're a very busy practice, but we're good at what we do. Um, we, see, we see over 100,000 patients annually. We have offices that started in Wilson, and has just, we've just grown. We currently have seven offices right now, a number of well-practiced, well-experienced dermatology PAs. And we have um, our primary provider, who is um, Dr. Dennis Polly, who's been back. Basically, he knows Dr. D from when they were both in the military. Yes, we can yes, tell you about yes. That. The uh, the uh, great, of course, Womack Army Medical Center, right down here in Fort Bragg, North Carolina, an all American city. And so, uh, I guess you can say we, Dr. Polly and I, both cut our teeth in the military, and we're very proud of that. And I know um, a lot of the polyclinic patients see Dr. D for laser hair removal for some medical reasons. Um, Dr. D, do you want to talk a little bit about the patients that you see from there refer referral-wise? You know, it's really fantastic to have some peers that you can leverage their expertise. Uh, there's no question as a facial plastic surgeon, um, you know, I carry a knife, you know, but to be able to uh, go to my peers that have some expertise in the medical management of different skin conditions, and in this case, we're talking about unwanted hair and all the complications and or the benefits that can come from that, you know, it's great to be able to not just be a, a, a one-man show, but to also, once again, refer back um, uh, to Cheryl uh, at the Poly Clinic to say, hey, you know, I think I can also help with this patient's uh, treatment course by adding or removing uh, an option here, so. So true. One of the frustrating things as a provider when you're trying to help people with unwanted care, there are men who have beards that they have to shave because they're in the military or they're um, a policeman and they get these what they call pseudofolliculitis barbae which is just razor bumps another fancy name for razor bumps and I can give them topical products at work but they will not make the problem go away they just help with the symptoms if you're reducing the hair in the beard particularly if they plan on never having hair again the laser is perfect there are females who have polycystic ovarian syndrome who have the hair they never want to shave. It's not something they want. It's embarrassing. To be able to give them a topical product that helps relieve their symptoms is one thing, but being able to say, go see Dr. D. He can take care of this, and you'll never have to shave this area again, and that'll get rid of that problem. It's, it's amazing. So, you know, Cheryl, this is fantastic because we also know that there are medical conditions and, more importantly, medical symptoms of unwanted, in this case, facial or body hair. You've talked a little bit about uh, two very important things, the gentleman with the shaving bumps and the ladies with a hormonal imbalance. You know, how about those folks that we see that get those ingrown hairs and get those recurrent infections in the groin or the underarm? It can be not only embarrassing, it can be very painful. People that get the cysts under their arms or in their groin area, it's a condition called hydroadenitis suppurativa. And, um, Laser hair is one of the best ways to reduce the incidence of that and their, their distress that they have. So as we talked about with our clients, you know, uh, time and time again, if we get rid of the hair, we're going to get rid of the problem and the symptoms that go along with this. A absolutely. Um, and, you know, the other thing that we kind of talked about um, is, you know, this, this problem of folliculitis or inflammation of the hair is not regulated um, to my men. Um, but, however, the vast majority of folks that I see with this condition are my professionals who, once again, see themselves, you know, not only with professional pictures or imaging or marketing, but even something as simple as, you know what, just not crazy about my selfie. Um, what are some of those symptoms that these uh, men, as well as women, come in uh, with their folliculitis concerns? 
One of the main symptoms they have are pain. Um, when you get these infected bumps, it hurts. And then they have to shave over the top of this for their professional appearance. They get hyperpigmentation, which is very distressing. Even after the bumps go, you still have the dark areas. And most people want to have a nice, even tone to their skin. If you don't shave, if you do laser instead, that darkness that's there goes away. It fades over time. And of course, we have topical products that help with that. So some of the symptoms of the darkness that they see, the discomfort that they have, all that goes away with the laser treatment. And Jacqueline, we've also seen it time and time again, the woman who either shaves or tweezes or whatever have you, there may be you know, a very short temporary day or two or maybe even a week of no hair, but they still have that five o'clock shadow look Absolutely. from the pigment changes. And once again, psychologically, they're just not as confident. And you know our mantra, if you're confident, you are beautiful. So to be able to help with this condition and allow them to have that confidence and feel girlified, if you will, or for a male to feel masculine and confident, and they don't feel that somebody's constantly staring at this skin irritation is a huge, huge benefit for our folks. Oh, absolutely. Now, what are, what are the side effects of coming in, getting a laser, for instance, a man getting lasered on his beard that has a skin condition? What are the precautions that you take treating something like that, Dr. D or Cheryl? Well, the one thing about lasers you have to understand, it has to have a target. The target would be the pigment of the skin. If you do not understand this, then you would it'd be very often for a patient to get burned. So you need to go someone who's experienced with skin of color. You're going to target the color that's in the hair. When that color is targeted by the laser, it heats up. That heat is then delivered down to the portion of the growth, the growth portion of the follicle. That's what destroys it. If you have skin of color, you have to give enough energy to heat up the pigment in the hair without heating up the pigment in the skin. It's a very fine line. You have to know what you're doing. Dr. D is an expert at that. And you, you, you bring up a great point, Cheryl. Uh, for those individuals who have those light, thin blonde hairs or even red hairs or even the gray hairs, please understand there's no great target for the laser to see the hair and more importantly, the hair to see the laser energy. So we do have to have that in consultation. Now, let's get this really clear. This is not an on and an off switch. This isn't one and you're done. This is a process. I mean, these hair follicles are in a growth phase. They're in a resting phase and they're kind of in between. And if we can catch those hairs in those growth phase, we get the best opportunity to once again provide that reduction. So that's why we talk about doing these in series about four to six weeks apart because that's the growth cycle of the hair. And essentially, if you have a hair, let's say, on the underarm that's only, um, let's say a third of those hairs in the growth phase, you're only gonna knock out about a third of them. That's why we have to keep them coming back. And that's why it's really important to stress to our clients that this is not a one and done or this is one and I will get, you know, do something in six months now. You know, we have to stay on that to give them that, that great opportunity to uh, get permanent hair reduction. And it's important to remember that you don't wax. You have to have the hairs. You can shave, but you don't wax prior to the uh, treatment. And I think Chris is going to be talking about, you know, once again, how you're going to prep um, for that. So we're not going to steal her thunder oh, at sorry. this particular <laughs> time. Um, but um, uh, so, you know, and, you know, the other conditions that we're talking about as far as the, uh, the concerns that we have, you know, once again, uh, the, the neat thing about the uh, luminous duet laser is, is two great things. One, it's tunable. So for those individuals who, let's say, are not getting the response they need, we can slowly go up on the energy to allow us to treat the hair follicle without damaging the surrounding follicles. And the other thing is, the other question I get is just time, how fast can we do this? Well, the Duet laser has a very large head, uh, about, about half maybe the size of your palm, and so if you think about it, we can do an underarm in probably under four minutes for both sides total. So we're talking about something that can be done quickly on your lunch hour, done on a Saturday, um, and not require a whole bunch of, you know, discomfort or... or, or um, There's basically no recovery. Oh, exactly. I mean, you're in, you're out, you can go ahead, um, there's no downtime. People are right back to work. And those patients who may have heard horror stories about lasers, I worked on the initial luminous light shear 
laser years ago. It was one centimeter. Now you tell me you have a size that Oh, we, it's 10 times the size, it's, yes. So the advancement is amazing and the safety concerns for your skin. It, the change is, is great. So don't listen to those horror stories. And I've heard a lot about those horror stories, um, which is probably why most women or even men are afraid to come in and get a laser because they don't want square marks all over their legs or in their bikini area or even on their face. What do you two do as professionals to make sure that that doesn't happen? The first thing you need to do is know the skin type and have the appropriate settings. After that, you need to explain to the patient, don't come in tan, because it's going to change that the, pig, the amount of pigment in their skin. So if you know those two things, you've got it down pat, because it's pretty simple after that, pretty simple science. Oh, I agree. And you know, for those individuals who may be a little bit more sensitive, we talk about recommending even taking, you know, um, a little ibuprofen or Motrin to minimize that inflammation. Some people get a little itching after they shave, so we say, you know what, maybe a topical Benadryl cream to, to minimize that. But this is, you know, uh, those things as well. So once again, the right settings, talking to the client and see how they actually will respond. Remember that light is a controlled little sunbeam. So you may get a little bit of changes in color in the skin, especially for the Caucasian individual, just because it's just an isolated suntan, if you will. And so we just need to let them know what's going on. If we minimize those surprises, they're gonna do um, very well. Now let's just talk about if there is a change in pigmentation or energy or even some uh, dryness that happens and the client will say, oh, I was burned, I was burned. Actually, that's just the response to the laser. And as long as they understand that that may happen, the good news is, is you've got a lot of energy, you've got a lot of absorption, so probably that hair is not growing back there anytime soon. And then we can just go ahead and make those adjustments with the uh, luminous uh, duet in our case to basically minimize that from happening again. And you said also that most people do get permanent uh, reduction in the hair within four to seven treatments, depending on the area. It depends. It depends on the skin type. The ideal patient is fair complected with dark hair. There's a minimal absorption into that fair skin and the maximum absorption into the actual place where we want the laser to go anyway, the target. But as your skin gets darker, we have to turn down the power to prevent burning. So something that would do a person with very fair skin in five to six treatments may take a darker skin person maybe nine to ten treatments. And I think it's very important also to understand that there has been a great response at three treatments. We always talk about them that finish that series of five or six to minimize the likelihood of it coming back. And then the other question I get, well, Dr. D, do I need to come in? Is this totally gone? Well, I do have some patients that may come in once a year for a touch-up. Once again, everybody's different. And the other thing that's very important, we need to talk about how fast the hair grows. So places like the underarms, we know that grows very fast. Well, versus the gentlemen who get their backs done by us, that hair grows very slow. So we may space their um, appointments out to two months because there's no need for them to come back sooner because we're not going to get the... Um, we're not going to catch those hair follicles in the growth cycle like we talked about um, before. So the unwanted facial hair, the lip and the chin, which is of course very popular for all of my clients, male and female, you know, we hopefully, and we've seen at least historically, uh, that that hair actually first starts to grow back slower and then it grows back thinner. Exactly. And then all of a sudden they don't see it come back a at all. Uh, and you're still going to see, and here's the other thing too, is once we do the, um, the treatment, the hair or the little um, sprigs of hair that are there, they're still going to be there. We still need that hair to grow out of the shaft and fall out and then once again as that new hair tries to come back once again slower and thinner. Um, now let's talk a little bit about what exactly we need to do if we want to get laser hair removal at Fayetteville Plastic Surgery. So we need to call in, um, get your consultation, you can have your laser done in probably less than 20 minutes. You can come in your lunch hour. You can come on a break. Um, Dr. D, can you tell us a little bit about preparing your skin before you come in? So fantastic. Um, and, and Cheryl alluded to this. We don't want you to wax the skin because all of a sudden you take out every single target. So if the laser can't see even those dots of hair, um, we don't have a whole bunch of target that we're shooting um, for. 
Uh, the other thing, so, and we also do need to prepare it like for waxing. So I don't want you to have long grown out hair because we do have to trim that. So even if you shave the night before, that's perfect um, for us, especially if we're talking about something simple uh, as an underarm. You know, the, the best case scenario is also if the uh, patient wears a tank top. You know, you don't have to get fully undressed. You're in, you're out. Um, you can wear your deodorant that you put on normally in the morning. We may just take that off really quickly, but, but not a big deal at all as far as uh, prepping the skin. Um, what we don't want to make sure is the patient does not have an active infection. So if you're coming in to see us and we've got a little bit of an, an abscess from, once again, the uh, ingrown hairs causing that complication, we need to make sure that we have you on antibiotics beforehand to take care of that problem as well. And then after after the getting your treatment of laser hair removal, um, basically you can just put like ointment on your skin. Yeah, some people we just may put just a little bit of aquaphor for the cooling. Um, some individuals like a little cold pack that we use. Very, very, very rarely do we have to use a topical numbing medicine. But those there are some individuals, as you know, Cheryl, are really, really sensitive no matter what we do for them. And we provide them a topical numbing medicine um, that they can uh, purchase from us. We'll put on about a half an hour for once again makes it. But usually that's unnecessary because with the newer technology uh, and with the little vacuum device, we are able to turn the energy down, which in the patient's mind, less pain, less discomfort. Now, I've had laser hair removal on my, on my upper lip and also on my legs, and I noticed that the luminous laser, there's different um, little sizes of the device that's put on your skin. Can you tell our listeners why you would use a different size, like on your lip, or to cover a leg, or to treat a leg, basically? So the client wants it, how can I come in, get the great treatment, and more importantly, minimal time. So uh, I have to applaud Luminous by their technology to allow us to, once again, treat a larger surface area. As we said, our first technology was one centimeter. So Cheryl, just think of us, you know, remember we used to do a leg or a back, You'd be there four hours. Uh, it was, yeah. And so now I can do an area, or uh, my folks over at the med spa can do an area of the back literally in 20 minutes to a half an hour. Uh, and because there's not a whole bunch of increased energy that we don't have to put on, it's done all with no ice. Um, there is a cooling device that we use also that blows cool air. Uh, once again, the client can go right back to work, throw their shirt on. There's nothing up. Uh, but for the guys that have, you know, the sweater on their back, uh, please make sure you do shave uh, the night before or the day of. And just give us that little dot, as we talked about for prepping, that would uh, help us out uh, a whole bunch. But, you know, we still need that smaller one to get into those tight areas, whether it's around the, uh, around the mouth, um, whether it's, you know, essentially behind the ear. And also when we do bikini or Brazilians, we use those smaller um, um, devices, if you will, to ensure that we have total um, reduction uh, all the way around. What um, what would, in your opinion, be the most popular area for women and men to get done? Cheryl. Upper lip is important. Um, I see that a lot. It's really quick, takes hardly any time for that. Underarms, because women, if you don't have to shave all the time, that's convenient. Particularly here being in the South, you have a lot more warm days where you can wear short sleeves, which I think is great. And, and let's talk about the sums that are some of those places where hair grows that are not so it, obvious. Exactly. You know, for the guys, it's about, hey, can you get this hair off my ears? Um, also, you know, there are, there are a few males and females that got little hairy knuckles, too, that we got to work on. Mm -hmm. And that allows them to do for that. One of the... Um, uh, and even the toes. The toes, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I will tell you, if we're doing, let's say, a lip and chin, we will inevitably get a client says, hey, what about these few little hairs that I have in my nipple area? I mean, you know, once again, building that confidence with their, with their partner. Or, you know, uh, I've got um, hair right on my wrist, which once again is catching my wristband. You know, like I said, if there's hair, we can take it off. Now, gentlemen, for those of you who are actually losing their hair on their scalp, and have made the decision because being bald is now a is 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 more of a lifestyle, and it's okay, you know, with our celebrities. 
we will have some individuals that we will just finish them off by oh, taking yeah. off the hair on their head and so they, they only have to go around shaving so guys do not believe this is just for the curvy parts of the body if you will we definitely want to make sure we can provide you for that as well and, and let's not also forget you know once again in our culture a male does not have to shave below I mean does not have to grow a beard below their jawline exactly. and so for those individuals who want to keep their beard we can actually give them a really nice um, if you will sculpted beard so some of these guys have this perfect five o'clock shadow you know once again if you can get that permanent edge up how cool is that that's awesome um well, that's great. Uh, anything else you'd like to add today, Cheryl, about laser hair removal? Let our listeners know. I think once you try it, get the best results from it, you'll be thinking, what area can I do next? <laughs> uh, that's right. We do have a lot of repeat uh, clients. And, you know, once again, um, for us to basically help them out, you know, with a medical condition or once again building that confidence um, socially, it is huge, huge important um, for uh, that. Okay, and once again, listeners, if you would like to schedule your laser hair removal appointment, please call 910-323-3757. Schedule your time to get lasered and get rid of all your unwanted hair.